The first public execution by hanging in Hawaii was that of Kamanawa and Lonopua Kau in 1840. This sad milestone marked the first time that an ali'i of such rank had been convicted of a crime under the new constitutional law. Beyond the cool waters and trade winds of our idealistic paradise is the thin veil which separates our world from the place where the shadows talk back. Welcome to Hawaii's Most Haunted. Kamanava, also referred to as Kamanava Opio, or Kamanava Elua, was a high-ranking ali'i and grandfather of future monarchs King David Kalakaua and Queen Lili'u Kalani. He was the grandson of Kame'e Iamuku, one of the royal twins on the coat of arms of Hawaii. He was named after his great uncle, Kamanava, the twin of his grandfather. Kamanava was born during the days of the ancient customs with an unstructured approach to marriage. He found it difficult to live according to the increasingly Christian ways of his peers. When one-to-one -one marriage had been declared the law by royal fiat, his roving habits were not changed, and whenever he was attracted to a new love, he followed his old ways. His wife, Komokuiki, adhering to the new faith, had little sympathy with his wanderings and finally went to the chiefs, seeking a divorce. As early as 1825, the chiefs in various districts had issued edicts of law that, following Christian teachings, included prohibitions against adultery and the biblical relief of divorce and the right to remarry was given to the injured party. Under this new constitutional law, punishment for adultery in missionary-influenced Hawaii included banishment to the barren island of Kaho'olawe. And so it was with Kamokuiki, whose divorce dated August 16th, 1840, stated, because Kamanava has committed adultery repeatedly, his wife Kamokuiki has requested a separation. I therefore give on to you, Kamanava, the certificate granting you a separation. You shall not marry another woman until after the death of your wife. Kamokuiki can, however, marry again, even now. To Kamokuiki, I give unto you a certificate granting you two a separation as provided by law. He shall not marry another woman during your lifetime. Only after your death can he do so. But you, Komokuiki, are permitted to marry another husband, even now. Six weeks after the divorce decree, Komokuiki was dead, and Kamanava and his accomplice, Lonopua Kau, were arrested. The two confessed that Lonopua Kau had prepared the mixture of Akia, Auhuhu, and Ava, and that Kamanava had administered the fatal dose that had caused Komokuiki's death. On September 30th, 1840, a court was held at Fort Kekuanohu, also known as Honolulu Fort, or for some simply, the Fort. The trial of Kamanava and Lonopua Kau commenced. King Kamehameha III was present. The presiding judge was the Kuhina Nui Kekuanaua, and the jury was made up of 12 high-ranking ali'i. During the trial, the facts were presented. Kamanava had fallen passionately for another woman, and so called upon Lonopua Kau to help rid himself of his wife, for Lonopua Kau was known to be skilled in the art of preparing poisons. Lonopua Kau was also wishing to rid himself of his wife, and the two agreed to poison both. On a Sunday evening, Komokuiki, Kamanava's wife, was invited to drink ava with a group of friends at the house of her son-in-law, Hikoi. Lonopua Kau prepared two separate portions of ava and into one slipped an amount of poison made from akia and auhuhu. After taking two mouthfuls, Komokuiki asked for water and inquired to the rest of the group if their ava was bitter, to which everyone replied, no. Komokuiki said, then my husband has dark designs against me. I shall die. He has poisoned me. It took three hours for Komokuiki to die. Medical assistance was unsuccessful. She died in a house directly across from the west side of the Rook House on Nu'uanu and Baratania streets. 
An autopsy showed that Komokuiki's stomach was much inflamed while everything else was in order. The Hawaiian Gazette reported, As soon as she passed about midnight, the news immediately spread. The terrible wailing commenced that quickly made its way to the other side of the island. It was so loud, so prolonged, and so sudden that it awoke at once almost all the residents. At that hour, as its sepulchral cadences rose and fell and were lost in the distance, the effect was startling and mournful in the extreme. Kamanava and Lolopuakal were immediately apprehended and confessed to their crimes. Lolopuakal also confessed to five previous murders, including that of the former commander of the Ho'ikaika, whom he poisoned in a similar manner a few years prior on the Big Island. The jury decided upon a verdict of guilty of willful murder. Kikauluohi, the Kuhina Nui, passed a sentence of death. Their sentence was published in the Polynesian on October 10, 1840. Sentence of the chiefs sent in writing to Kamanava and Lonopuakau, published for the information of all people. Ea kapalapala, analii i palapala ia Kamanava laua o Lonopuakau. Ike mai na kanaka apau. E kamanava a me lono pua kau. E like me ka olelo ho o heva ia o lua. E make. I ka ho o holo ia i ka la 30 or in September. Ke hui aku nei maua i ko o lua la. E hia ai a ka 20 o kea malama. I hola 11. Ko mai ka i o lua. Ke mihi ia o lua i kea mau la. I kala ia mai ai. O ko o lua heva nui e yesu. Kamehameha the third, lawa o ke kauluahi. To Kamanava and Lono Puakau, in accordance with the sentence of death passed upon you on the 30th day of September, we hereby notify you that the day of your execution will be at the 20th day of the present month at 11 o'clock a.m. Happy indeed will you be, should you improve the present few days, by repentance that your heinous sins may be forgiven through Jesus Christ. Signed, Kamehameha III, Kikauluohi, Honolulu, Oahu, October 5th, 1840. As Kamanava was a high-ranking ali'i, great efforts were made to obtain his pardon from Kamehameha III. The king went to his cell and asked him, To whom do you look for salvation? Kamanava replied, To God. The king then said, then look to him, and not to me, to save you. The site of the execution was over the gate of the old fort, which stood in the street. The gallows was erected above the gate, so that it could be easily seen for some distance. From the Polynesian, October 24, 1840. The murderers, Kamanava and Lonopuakau, expiated their crime on the scaffold on Tuesday last at the fort in the presence of a large concourse of people. After the execution, either one or both of the bodies were buried at the crossroads in accordance with the old English custom of burying executed criminals where they would be out of the way and the burial places be forever unknown. It is believed that the crossroads selected were at the junction of King and Punchbowl streets, although it may have been at the junction of Queen and Punchbowl. It is said that after Kalakaua came to the throne, he caused the body of Kamanava to be taken up and the bones removed to Mauna Ala in Nu'uanu Valley. Hangings occurred at the old forts up until 1857, when prisoners were finally moved to the new Oahu prison in Ivile, also known as the Reef. <laughs>